Hi guys, this is my first Ask Me Any AMA, whatever that's called. Um, ask Me Anything. That, AMA. I have no idea when I'll actually put this together, but it is, um, I would estimate sometime in July, <laughs> based on my learning curve with video editing. And I'm not even quite sure if I know how to embed screen grabs just yet, but I will eventually figure it out. If it's on this video, it will be my next. I wrote down a couple of questions. Let's just answer them. Is your handle a couple's account or is it just you? So originally it was more of a document our collective lives like a vlog style for extended family that lives long distance from us. But we weren't really great at doing that consistently and I've decided that I am going to be consistent with it. So our social media accounts are mostly just me at the moment and it captures our life as a family unit. So it's me and my husband, obviously. So it focuses more on where I'm at and what I wanna share and um, Everything else is just a pleasant additive. What are some unique things to know about you? I know I can be a little awkward and I am embracing that in this uh, journey to put both visual and audio content about wellness. And I think the only transition from going from visual to include the audio is that I have a stutter sometimes. Uh, and it's something that I am working through. Does your reading list come from somewhere? It does not. It mostly stems from books that were in the waiting room of both my individual therapist's office as well as our family therapist's office. And they were just take home readings. There are a wide spectrum of angles on mental health, but as I started doing some research about the authors of these books. Obviously my computer learned stuff about me that it then, I started seeing ads for recommendations of other books. And so there's a pursuit of finding what the library can get or what I can maybe, maybe something that does still exist in a um, doctor's office somewhere. So it's really just a collection of reading what's available, learning about the author, and then having the computer learn about me to recommend other things to look for. Is there too much therapy? I think that yes, there's probably a line somewhere where maybe you're there's so much therapy it's hindering what you're doing and it's holding you back. I don't I don't really know. I don't know where the line is. I'm sure just like with anything, too much of one thing is not good. So a soft yes. How long have you and Caleb been together? I have been lucky to be with him for the better part of 10 years, which feels like a long period of time to identify. I never, I think when I was younger, I never really thought I would be with somebody for so long, despite wanting to be. So we've been almost, almost 10 years in by the end of this year um, and three, four of which have actually been married. What is your PTSD from? I think this is a great question, but I also find it to be very deeply personal to just answer it back in a very quick fire shot oriented answer. Who knows, maybe I will have a long story time as to the components of the complexity of the PTSD that I'm trying to learn from, undo, and heal with, from, with, for. <laughs> um, and so I don't have a direct answer to that, but I'm sure I will share bits and pieces along the way. What kind of therapies have you tried? This is another great question um, and I can say there has been a lot of talk therapy 
which is widely available. I think it's what a lot of people associate when you think about mental health and personal growth and taking time to look inwards and heal and understand some of those instances of your past where you have been hurt and didn't know how to effectively process that by yourself. And I am, but I've, I'm also a big fan of alternative therapies, which has looked like a lot of different things. Well, I probably could fire off a couple of those, which I'm drawing a blank on at the moment, include topics of MDMA, research studies, uh, microdosing. I am looking at things like a peyote ceremonies or ayahuasca retreat, as well as something that's very just available in itself of plant therapy. I think there's a lot of mindfulness and metaphorical assimilation to when you're gardening. Um, it's something that I have grown in the last couple years to learn speaks to me. And it's something that helps keep me grounded while I'm continuing to unpack even some of the topics that come up with a uh, professional in the mental health field that I don't have a full amount of time to go over with. Um, and then I'm trying to think as well as there's different also you think of talk therapy you think of like family therapy or couples therapy and it's like a one-on-one -on -one, uh, repartee with a trained worker mental health worker but there's actually different models within that I'm coming to learn and I looking to share that with you. I know that currently right now I am personally one of the therapy models that I'm working with is a codependency one with Caleb so and that even in itself is um, slightly atypical to how that model construct normally works. So I look forward to sharing some of that information of just different models and types of therapy that can be looked into. Do you have any advice? A great open-ended broad question. So I think with keeping on topic to what I'm talking about today about mental health and what my channel is going to grow into and be about, a big construct that I think would be beneficial in the way we mainstream our approach to mental health is meeting people where they are. And that is a physical and emotional, mental, spiritual type of current existence where when you're looking for when you're when you're expecting patients that don't know how or what type of help is going to work for them to have them even have the confidence to reach out and establish connection with essentially a stranger in the beginning and moving forward to growth development and healing is intimidating it's a barrier it's it's a hurdle that a lot of people don't even get over um, there are a lot of different hurdles as to why that is but i think we have to sort of flip the structure of how mental health care works in its current form let's see other advice i don't really know um, i think mental health and personal growth and development also is a challenge for family units or coupleships who have to do that work together. And I think that's really important. And that's, and to have those open, honest conversations collectively are scary and tough and uncomfortable. And they might feel like different things in the beginning, but might result in different things after the conversation is had. And that open-mindedness and open-endedness is an important formula. Are you going to do IGTV? This is how old or dated I am. I did not know what that was until I Googled it. And um, no, <laughs> I am, I have been toying around with different videos with YouTube since like 2005 or six back when the platform was just like put something together put it as a public way to share with each other and i used to put these little videos of my friends and i doing um travel weekends or recaps of our collective get-togethers or parties that we had or just like various loving group friends type of videos 
And then, you know, a couple years ago, I started this like around the house. This is what we're doing to keep in touch with extended family. And I'm just familiar with YouTube. In some ways, it feels like a familiar platform I'm coming home to, uh, which sounds really um, whatever. YouTube has, in a way, given back to me, especially in the last couple years, with um, creative inspiration, things that have made me feel like I can do something. I might be experiencing some of the effects and symptoms of what mental health can limit me in life, but I have followed along with certain creators in their special niches and talents, and I have seen them grow to become better, well, video editors, but also just better in their area of specialty, what they've been able to share with me and their audiences, and watch almost as their lives have like come to grow with, um, coming together in their own family. Some have had kids. I like that. Um, it's been fun to watch and I think that I'm at a point where maybe I can share a little bit about myself and put a face on giving back information to an audience who might be looking for the information that I'm learning about currently. And the last question I wrote down, what are your goals? 2020 be damned. I've seen a lot of these memes of, I'm gonna get my stuff together this year and this year's gonna be about me, 2020, and it like some sort of steamroll sort of imagery of how that's not gonna actually happen. I am going to steamroll the steamroll? I don't know. I am going to continue to push forward. I made a commitment to both Caleb and essentially myself that I am going to get ahead of the beast of mental health struggles that reoccurs in our home. And um, it has, I think some of those foundation building blocks have finally been identified. So it's time to start constructing it. As the world sort of reconfigures, it might actually work to my benefit because being based at home is been one of my hurdles of this social anxiety agoraphobia leaving the house I might be able I I will be able to continue to put that stuff together and explore those different alternative resources because ultimately I have control over this space and what has been another obstacle for me is the lack of control of leaving the space. And that in itself is something that I have a hard time grappling with. From home base, I am going to build myself up and grow outwards. And I'm going to document that and I'm going to share that because at the, not at the end of the journey, but down the line of this journey, I am going to have a visual library of look at the successes and accomplishments I've done. And this is also going to serve as a way to be accountable to myself because I have to edit this video footage. I have to look myself in the face. I am going to know visually when I am struggling and hopefully be able to identify it in a more, um, time assertive manner and yeah accountable is just the right way to identify these like video documents of i'm going to be accountable to both me and my husband um which is important to me i think more broadly too i've identified some creative and practical goals for personal growth in the year to come that i have been checking off almost in a quarterly fashion at this point um, I do have a journaling blog website where I'm keeping tabs on that currently. Uh, you can check that out if you are super curious about it. The creativity is something that has been suffocated for me um, in the dealing with the what feels like the inability to practically do anything. So I'm trying to find the balance between those two things. Keep tabs on balancing the practical and creative goals. I hope to bring to life is I'm sort of failing at the practical stuff and the feeling of those failures is suffocating my creative avenues, which sort of regen, well, regenerizing, is that a word? Um, revigorating, invigorating. Why don't I know words? All of those don't sound like words. Re-energizing. 
how I can go about a functional day and to break down some of those big feelings of failures into they're just little things and that's okay. Failing is okay. Well, this is a disaster. What have I done? <laughs> you have to picture it. This is going to be my office this winter. I don't know how yet, but I'm building a porch where my husband and I could drink iced tea before autumn. And they will pay off at some level because I'm going to check these off my list. I think a big thing for me is in a lot of areas, arenas, intersections of my life, I've been waiting to show up perfect and um, that's allowed me to not be incredibly present in my life. And by not being present, I've lost a lot of that inner sense of purpose. And I'm trying to find that purpose again. <clears throat> so I actually feel like I copped out a little bit on that last questions answer. Um, I rambled and I do have all of these little goals, but I think the the answer to the question is really just a direct thing. And it's what what is my goal? And I think it's ultimately it's to wake up on like a weekend morning and have Caleb roll over and as my husband tell me that he's proud of me and I will be able to look him back in the eyes and tell him that I'm proud of me too and it to not be a thing and for me to get out of bed and make us waffles and bring his waffles to him while he's playing video games in bed and having a lazy start to the weekend and not feeling like I'm constantly failing all the time. That is my goal. To realize that I'm not failing. That I'm actually growing. Okay, <laughs> so... Who knows when I'll post this, but I will post this.